What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Lands of Elysium. Let's get started. I've got a lot to show you. Now, before we get started, I just want to say that I actually wanted to record another Fallout Craft episode. But I've spent so much time here that <laughs> I felt like it was just necessary to record an update video on what's been happening here at the Wither Skeleton Fortress. Now, as you can see in front of us, we've been having some Wither Skeletons fall, which means this is finally now working. But let's talk about what I had to do to get to this point. So one of the biggest things that we had to do was actually spawn proof this fortress. So you're seeing all the walkways within the fortress covered with stairs, granite stairs to be precise, and gray carpet. This helps spawn proof the fortress itself and not just the inside of the fortress, but also the walkways that are above it or on it. Both the bridges and the exterior surfaces of the fortress itself have been spawn proofed as well with the granite stairs and the gray carpet everywhere I could. Then we've been slowly just trying to work up and build up the fortress a little bit more to give it more of a unique design. I'm really loving the design that we've been doing, this skeletal kind of like Beetlejuice type fortress. I mean, it's looking fantastic. I'm absolutely loving the way it's turning out. And while we were doing that, we were basically here just trying to build up the fortress as much as possible, seeing if we would get any spawns at all down at our Wither AFK station, or Wither Skeleton AFK station, station, right down there. Oddly enough though, nothing, nothing was spawning this entire time that I spent days out here trying to build this place up. Nothing, it, it's just been a tremendous headache and really disappointing too. I, I just didn't know what to do. One of the things I did try was hunt more turtles down like we did before. I increased the turtle egg counts here. Not that that does anything. I don't think it does at all, actually. But, you know, I was willing to try anything. I also built up a second spawn pad. So now we have two spawn pads for Wither Skeletons. And I actually linked them both by connecting this kind of drop shoot here. Instead of building another AFK kill station, I built this kind of drop shoot where all of the Wither Skeletons that are collected from the second spawn pad will filter down and fall into this first spawn pad like you're seeing right now. There he goes. And he'll plop over, see this guy, and run down and drop to our AFK station down below. So we're getting a collective of two spawn pads. And this thing sometimes, when you're down there at the AFK station, will fill up. It's absolutely amazing. I'm gonna try to get a shot of that later on. Also, I gotta say really quick, I apologize. I'm still dealing with sinus pressures. So if my voice does weird things, I am sorry. <laughs> but not only have we been just working on building this place up and spawn proofing the fortress itself, we've also had to spawn proof the surrounding area because even though the fortress itself is within a soul sand valley, we are bordering a crimson root forest. I believe it's called Crim crimson, the, the red stuff. We've been just trying to spawn proof the area as much as we possibly can. And even after having done all this work to make sure that we get a good a number of adequate spawns down below, I bet you're not going to know what the actual issue was as to why we weren't seeing any spawns at all. And when I say spawns, I mean there was no blaze, there was no skeletons, there was no piglins, no zombie piglins, no wither skeletons, nothing. Nothing was spawning at all on this fortress. I was going insane. So after days of spending my time out here building this place up, testing various things, and trying to figure out what was happening to our fortresses, I did a little research. And I finally found a few similar things that were happening. There were some bugs put in, and I found out that some people had issues with the fortress losing spawns, and apparently, I don't know if this is from updating or messing with MCA selector or what have you, but some people after updating had the issue of no spawns in fortresses, which led to me to believe that, okay, a fortress is not acting like a fortress because it's lost its properties somehow. Luckily enough, I came across a mod that would help answer my suspicions. This mod is called the Bounding Box Outline Reloaded. This mod has a bunch of different options and what it does is it allows you to select certain 
structures you can select various at a time just depending on what you want to do i selected fortresses of course because that's what i'm looking at right now and i activated it of course we're not going to see anything of what this mod does with shaders on so let's also turn those off all right and here you have it with shaders turned off we can see what this mod does it allows you to see the bounding boxes for structures and these bounding boxes basically let you see the spawnable areas of those structures. Like this intersection down here, we've got this big red box surrounding it. And specifically, I thought about turning this intersection into another spawn pad too, to test to see if that would allow for more spawns. But I didn't end up doing that just because I came across this mod first. And when I first used this mod, I basically discovered that the fortress was missing these bounding boxes. It was missing the necessary components to tell the game that, hey, this is a nether fortress. It should be spawning mobs, specifically wither skeletons. I, I can't tell you how or what a, I, I, it was a mix of emotions. I was relieved to discover what it was. I was frustrated to have done everything in my power to get spawns and um, still nothing was working i mean in the end things worked out right we've got a nice spawn proof area that is dedicated to making sure that this area will only spawn what we need on this fortress but this is a really cool mod it could probably be used for various things it helped me discover what was wrong with my fortress not only this fortress actually but it also helped me to discover that our first found fortress over by our portal was also having the same issue so I had to, of course, revert these areas into its vanilla state. What I did was, and luckily enough, I made a backup of this world. I suggest you guys always do the same. Keep a backup of your worlds. First, what I did using world edit was copy this entire area as I've done here with this newly designed look, everything I built here. With a schematic from world edit copied i then reverted this area over to its vanilla state using the backup files i basically just transferred over the original files back into this world and it went back to vanilla with that done i then used world edit to paste in everything that i had built in its place and that's what happened it retained the bounding box structure of the fortress while allowing me to copy in everything that I built. So we didn't lose any progress at all. That was my fear, losing progress. And normally I don't like to do these kind of things just because, well, you know, this is a survival series and I wanna do everything in survival. And technically we're not doing these things to advance us in any way using these techniques to fix things that we find are broken just like we did with the weird chunk borders after updating to 1.16 and then again in 1.17 i don't know if that's going to happen in 1.18 it probably will but we'll see when we get there we'll cross that bridge when we get there yes it's it's been a headache guys this is this has been insane but this is kind of what happens when you try to keep a survival world running as long as possible and because I want to be completely honest with you guys. I want to tell you everything that I'm doing. Absolutely everything. I'm going to be 100% transparent. So, you know, it's almost like I have to just... I, I've even just contemplated starting a new series on helping you guys fix your worlds or telling you guys how to fix your worlds with situations like this. This has been insane. It's, it's been absolutely insane. So then after having everything fixed and spawns started to occur in this fortress, I was super happy. And what I actually did was come back here and fix the drop area. So you can see now we went back to having two wolves because I did find three, but I ended up getting rid of one because the third wolf that was here ended up having a bit of trouble with attacking the skeletons. So I, I left it here at two. And you can see that they are on minecarts or in minecarts on top of a slab. And the wither skeletons will drop onto this iron trap door, which gives them a good height for the uh, skeletons to drop. The wolves will not jump out, especially because they're in minecarts. 
and they'll get attacked right away on the opposite side if i want to lower the wolves this will prevent them from getting attacked by my sword and because we have a stair here with another trap door i'm forced to look upwards to attack the wither skeletons with my looting sword now this isn't completely perfect sometimes there are items that do get stuck in the wolf area just because i can't put a hopper underneath them and any items that I do collect from them, I can just put into this chest here. And those will get sent over to a sorting system back here where I can get bones. So I have plenty of bones for bone meal. I have wither skeleton skull collection. So man, I've got 43 now. This is absolutely amazing. And then of course I've got plenty of coal to come in through. Now the stone swords I don't need, so those are gonna be fed. Um, down here to this dropper that'll get rid of them permanently along with any overflow that might occur here So this is awesome. It's turning out fantastic, and I'm, I'm absolutely loving what we've created here Oh, we've got to reset you. That's the only thing this some, Sometimes that happens where the slab will kind of intersect with the minecart. It doesn't prop them up properly There's not, not much I can do about that so with the farm now working, we've got a nice steady flow of wither skeletons. I don't know, there you go. You've got a nice steady flow of wither skeletons coming out of the second spawn pad. They're all being transported via this lava flow to the first spawn pad down below. That is currently filled with <laughs> blaze. But we will be getting just tons of wither skulls, I hope. They do like to fight through the, the lava sometimes, but once they get flowing, they do get flowing, and it's absolutely insane down below. And ideally, of course, you're going to want to just use your looting sword because that's probably going to yield you uh, more wither skeleton skulls than just allowing the wolves to get to them. So after much work and turmoil and just so much chaos here with this farm, I'm so glad that we finally got things working. Now, I also want to put a sign up here so that I know that I also have to go down this section. Uh, we're going to say Wither Skeleton Farm. Put some arrows down to indicate the path that I have to take. There we go. And uh, you know what? We're going to have to put... I feel like we need to put exit signs somewhere. There's probably a better way of doing this. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe here, right? Exit. There, exit this way. Okay. Now something that I've been also encountering is this room here. Is it safe today? It seems like we're okay. I don't know what's happening with this room. Are they above? Are they? Why am I still getting? I should not be getting where, where are you guys coming from? That's what's bugging me out. Where are you guys coming from? Nothing. No blocks should be spawnable. I've made sure of this. And yet, somehow, you guys are spawning around here somewhere. I don't get it. We've basically spawn-proofed this entire area with brown wool, which in this texture pack appears as dirt and makes it awesome for pathing and stuff. What is happening? What is happening? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But one of the biggest issues is this this one room here. I, I've gotten Blaze here. I've gotten a Wither Skeleton here. Uh, this whole room is protected, but I'm not sure why. I'm getting spawns right around here somewhere, somehow. So I've got to definitely keep an eye on this room and make sure that this is also a spawn-proofed room to maximize the ability of our Wither Skeleton Fortress. Now, we've also been seeing a lot of blaze... Uh, not a blaze. A lot of uh, gas spawn out here. I gotta figure out how to build a gas farm because if we can get more of those that might be a lot of fun too 
especially it's going to be super useful for potions. Yeah, dude, uh, you shouldn't, you really should not be out here. So I've just been spending just days out here just trying to make this perfect. There's still a lot that has to happen out here. I still have to finish decorating much of this fortress and then I have to figure out where I can put a gas farm that's not going to be super intrusive on the rest of the build. Now I've also been trying to just perfect some settings in OBS so hopefully again the mic is coming through nicely because um, we switched over to just regular OBS for our live streams instead of using Streamlabs. Uh, hopefully I'm not repeating myself with this information but um, I, I, you know it just caused me to move a lot of things around and so far the streams have been a lot better so hopefully the recordings are as well and on top of that i've also just been playing with some in-game settings for the shaders again along with a rtx type of resource that should provide a little bit of uh an rtx like feel to the game now what i want to do really quick is just collect some of this pork because that is tasty i'm going to get rid of this gold armor put on our netherite there we go and i am going to probably just put this up there so i don't lose that but also put away our gold stuff because uh we don't really need it where we're going and i need to get some gold yeah i need to get some gold to make some boots i lost them hey buddy what's up all right here we are back in the overworld and uh i feel i don't i don't know you can see our lighting situation is is definitely more dynamic now it's it's not so much of a a headache that it once used to be i believe this is much smoother now uh there is a situation with these rtx type textures oh it's it's night again it's night again i'm gonna have to go to sleep really quick i think we can just take a nap on this bench okay there we go let's head outside and i can show you possibly some other things right so i mentioned that we kind of incorporated some type of rtx like resource and i don't know if you guys can see this it's it's different every time let's see if we can find a situation where it stands out more hmm okay this might be a good example you can see our walls are a little bit darker than the rest of our cobble here you can also see that this brick texture is a little different than this brick texture just because it has a darker outline here. It doesn't have this kind of pixelation happening between the cracks. Um, there's also, let's see, there should be cobble blocks which stand out a little bit more than some of the others as well. Maybe we can see that with the stairs over here. Or maybe over here? Okay, this is this is getting a little difficult. Right, so you can kind of see that this cobble stair is a little bit darker than this cobble stair. And that's just because I'm trying to force it to use two different resource packs. Uh, one is our Vastin texture pack, of course, that we get all these lovely shader or textures created by germs. And then we're trying to incorporate a RTX shader which will kind of push java to mimic rtx like things it's not true rtx because it requires uh, certain things um but you know these textures should have uh, depth maps specular maps things like that which will kind of give it a certain type of uh, feel to it and i think it looks pretty great i'm just testing out the performance to see if it's something that we want to continue using or not something else that's really cool about these text or rtx textures is that these these like trap doors here you can kind of see a little bit of glistening happening with some of the metal components of that trap door and it when we move around it changes depending on how the light catches it you know it's it's really cool uh one of the bigger indicators on that is uh like jewels so like this ore here will glow in certain conditions or certain lighting conditions it'll glow a little bit more i'm absolutely loving it so there's things like that and uh you know just always trying to push our our textures our quality here ah oh, man but you can totally see the trap doors this way right here on the library look at that how it just changes look at that i love that it, it just all these little details it's that's what it is it's that's so neat now there's also something I got to do here, which I need to contemplate 
and do some research on. Um, it's it's the library. I don't know if this is enough stalls. Can I get every single book in the game out of this library? I don't know. And if not, then I'm going to probably open up the sides right here for more villager bookshops like these. Yeah, I don't know. Something to look at. Something to look at. Now I've got to finish up this house here. I've got to finish up this pond here. I was thinking about making an AFK pond here for fishing. Uh, I need to do the lighthouse still. There's still that. There's the town of Sour, which still needs a lot of improvement. And we also need to redesign the stronghold. Especially now that we have an amethyst type situation there. We could do something pretty neat with uh, a theme of amethyst. I hear they make beautiful path blocks. We'll see what we can do with those. And uh, let's see, I need to find out what's happening here at the inn, at the villager trader. Look at these, see this is what I'm saying, the, the block types look a little different with this RTX thing. Um, there's a bit of a weird border with some of them, but depending on the block, they also have a very nice kind of uh, reflection to it. It's, it's pretty awesome, I like it. All right, ooh. Um, wow, wow. Let's go take a look at this. We've, we've got quite a, quite a bit happening here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh boy. And, and a, and a baby. All right. We've got to start filling up the cathedral then because that's super awesome. What are you doing here? Where did you come from? We got... We got cats coming out of the... I might have to capture him. He might be the, ca the, the, the cat at the inn. I might have to capture this guy. He's going to be the cat at the inn, maybe. That That's going to be cool. We also got to finish this tavern up. We've got to create some uh, farmer's market out here by the farm. There, there's still so much I've got to do here. It's absolutely insane. This world is never going to be over. Don't, don't, don't run. Don't run. You're safe. Don't worry. But at least now, with a Wither Skeleton farm working, we can actually focus on creating a kill chamber for a Wither. And I've seen that done underneath the dragon portal in the end. I, I don't know how I feel about that. It seems kind of scary. I don't want to. I don't want it to blow up the uh, <laughs> the portal back. But also, I don't want to ruin it because I, I think you have to ruin the portal itself in order for that to work. And I don't want to do that. So we'll think of something, but I also need to do a honeybee farm and just, ah, it's just so much. There's so much I want to do. We'll get to it. Don't worry. And something else I got to tell you guys, we are going to be switching over the comment of the day to just one comment per episode. Now, a lot of my content creator friends, they will do recordings and editing and public or releasing of episodes or content in a single day or the same week. For me, that's a little difficult to do. So I like to create a backlog of episodes. I try to record as often as I can so that I have a, uh, a month of episodes ready in advance. And sometimes that's extremely hard to do. Like right now, I'm a little bit behind because of the wither skeleton situation. That, that killed me on time. So now I've got to play catch up. And this is all mostly because of my personal life schedule. It's pretty chaotic. So I play and record when I can and edit when I can. And it's just, it's nuts. But it's always fun. And I always, always, always just have fun doing it and hearing from you guys in return. So it's worth it. But as a result, it also makes it a little bit difficult to have comment of the day at the end of every episode. So for that reason, we're going to reduce it to one comment per episode. That way, it should allow me to have comments at the end of every single episode instead of trying to get all three or, you know, if, if more people commented, it wouldn't be so bad, but I need to make sure that we can feature everybody at the end of every episode because it's more fun that way. So yeah, what one comment at the end of every episode, I'm, I'm, I'm talking too much now. So without further ado, today's comment of the day is Bagley Al Assistant Bailey. Let's go check out their comment. They say, love your videos, short and sweet. And it just goes to show you that you don't have to type in super long comments to get featured. I'm going to try to get as many new people featured as I possibly can. 
please provide a, a nice, good comment. Uh, you know, if it's a smiley face or something, I probably won't use it. But, you know, some nice, awesome feedback, things like that. Uh, you'll definitely get featured. And I will try to get everybody, I promise. It's not always going to be easy, especially now that we're going to do uh, one comment at the end of every episode. But, yeah, appreciate your comments. You guys are awesome. You guys are absolutely the best. And I will continue to do this series as long as possible for you guys. And because, well, I love it. This is actually my favorite world that I've been doing. So with that, until next time, I'll see you all later. Thank you so much for your support. And have a great day. Stay crafty.